Hello friends, welcome back to Dr. Jackie's Academy. In today's video, I will discuss a important type of STD which is called as syphilis. So let's start. In this video, I will discuss about the etiology and route of transmission of syphilis, different forms of syphilis like primary, secondary, latent and tertiary syphilis along with the congenital syphilis. So these are different forms of the syphilis along with the clinical diagnosis. So first of all, etiology and route of transmission. As I told in my previous uh, lecture, uh, this uh, syphilis is caused by a spirochete which is Treponema pallidum, which is a spiral shaped bacteria. So transmission, major sexual contact, blood transfusion, infected needles, plus from the mother to fetus, when it happens, it is called as congenital syphilis. And there is a strong association between the syphilis and HIV. That means if there is a HIV, very important chances that syphilis is there, or if syphilis is there, chances that HIV infection is also there. So now different stages of the syphilis. So uh, in this one, in this figure, I will summarize the thing, then I will explain all the things one by one. Let's say microorganism enters in the body. So there is an incubation period of three weeks to three months. Three months mean 90 days, very long incubation period between the entry of the microorganism and appearance of the symptoms. Then the first of all, the symptoms that appear, they are called as primary syphilis. And the manifestation of primary syphilis is the chancre. I will discuss in the next uh, subsequent slide. Then after two months, primary syphilis changes into secondary syphilis. And the symptoms of secondary syphilis include mucocutaneous lesions. And then secondary syphilis changes into the latent syphilis, which can be either early latent or it can be late latent and in this latent phase in both these two phases in latent there are no symptoms and then approximately after five years this latent changes into tertiary syphilis where can be neurosyphilis that means manifestations in the brain or cardiovascular that means related to the heart or the blood vessels so i will discuss all these stages one by one coming down to the primary syphilis. So as I told previously, there is a long incubation period. So symptoms may appear after three weeks to three months after the entry of the spirochete. And this disease is primary syphilis. The major characteristic feature is the presence of shankar, which is called as primary lesion. And where it is present, it is present on the external genitalia of male or female. In male or female genital organ, the ulcer is present, which is called as the chancre. So mostly either there is a single chancre or there are two chancres on the genital organ. So more about the chancre. This is painless, no pain is there and it is hard in nature. So this is the ulcer. So that means you can say, painless hard ulcer is a feature of the primary syphilis. So I just want to uh, differentiate from another chancre which is present in a disease called a chancroid. In the chancroid disease, this chancre is soft in nature while it is hard in the syphilis. Now this chancre is contagious and source of infection. So microorganisms are present so it can transmit the disease. So imp another important point is that even if you do not give any drug, these symptoms resolve spontaneously. The ulcers will be healed with within four to six weeks. You can say approximately two months, one to two months and the there is a scar at that site. So these are the symptoms of the primary syphilis. So that means symptoms will disappear and person will th think that I have become okay. But that is not the case. After two weeks, after two months, this another kind of symptoms appear, secondary syphilis. That means if this is a human being, 
then there is appearance of mucocutaneous lesion muco mean mucus cutaneous means skin lesion some lesions so the lesions can appear on the palms of the hand so it can appear on the palms they can also appear on the foot below portion the uh, heel portions okay so these kind of the uh, lesions can appear moreover these lesions can appear inside the mouth on the pharynx on the tongue on the buccal cavity so lesions inside the mouth uh, moreover if you talk about the lymph nodes lymph nodes are enlarged wherever the lymph nodes are present in the body throughout the body the lymph nodes are enlarged so these are the symptoms mucocutaneous lesions on the palms on the feet lower portion of the feet inside the mouth and lymph node so this is what i have written these symptoms appear within two months of resolution of primary chancre primary chancre is is removed but after two months this cancer syphilis appear and there is a generalized lymph node enlargement mucocutaneous lesions on the palms of the hand oral cavity pharynx and the sole of the feet and these cutaneous or mucosal lesions are contagious that is they contain infectious bacteria again like primary syphilis the symptoms will resolve spontaneously within 4 to 10 weeks that means within one or two months again the symptoms will disappear so again the person will think okay primary syphilis was resolved secondary syphilis is resolved now there is no symptom so that means person will enter into the latent syphilis latent mean hidden so that means in this latent syphilis phase no visible symptoms or signs are present in the syphilis but that doesn't mean that bacteria is not present bacteria is present and if you take out the blood carry out the serological test that means if you note down the antibodies antibodies are present against this spirochete it indicates infection is present that is persons have antibody against this spirochete so this latent phase hidden phase can be classified into two phases early latent and late latent i will discuss these two one by one coming down to early latent phase now this appears immediately after the secondary syphilis then the secondary syphilis is followed by the early latent phase and this is the phase lasting for approximately 1 year that means after secondary syphilis there is a 1 year period in which we say there is an early latent phase now what happens within 1 year the symptom the, there may be a case of a relapse that means from this person can go into the previous stage that means it can go into the secondary syphilis the symptoms of the secondary syphilis may reappear relapse can take place so in this phase persons are infectious so these are the features of the early latent phase coming down to the late latent phase now this late latent phase appear after the early latent phase that means there is a secondary syphilis then there is a early latent phase then there is a late latent phase there is this latent phase late latent phase may last for several years and after that late latent phase will be converted into or you can say it will progress into the tertiary syphilis and in comparison to the early latent phase in this phase the patients are non infectious now coming down to the tertiary syphilis now uh, about 1/3 of the patients if they are not treated then they will change into tertiary syphilis from the latent period after a period of 5 years that means you can say after approximately 5 years after after 5 years the latent phase will change into the tertiary phase and there are different manifestations of tertiary phase like cardiovascular syphilis neuro syphilis and benign tertiary syphilis i will discuss one by one first coming down to the cardiovascular syphilis cardiovascular syphilis now the impact of this cardiovascular syphilis is on the blood vessels let's say if i consider this is the normal blood vessel then what happens in this in this cardiovascular syphilis is that these blood vessels they become dilated not all but some of the portions of the blood vessel they get dilated along with it becomes very thin so this phenomenon is called as 
एनोरिज्म एंड द डिसएडवांटेज और द पोटेंशियल प्रॉब्लम ऑफ दिस काइंड ऑफ एनोरिज्म इज द इट कैन गो फॉर द रैप्चरिंग एंड देयर मे बी अ हेमरेज सो आई कैन समराइज दैट देयर इज अ सिफलेटिक एनोरिज्म एंड पर्टिकुलरली इट इज द आयोटा व्हिच इज अफेक्टेड एंड इट कैन बी फेटल बिकॉज़ ऑफ द मैसिव हेमरेज दैट टेक प्लेस सेकंड मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ द टर्शियरी सिफिलिस इज द न्यूरोसिफिलिस when there is a involvement of the neuro that is infection of the cns and there are abnormalities biochemical abnormalities that can be seen in the cerebro spinal fluid and there can be the uh, involvement of meninges and the blood vessels so also called as meningeo vascular disease and there may be the condition of the paralysis that is paralysis so neurosyphilis paralysis is one of the symptom then another thing benign tertiary syphilis so now it is characterized presence of goma what is goma goma is a ball of inflammation small spherical inflammatory uh, 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 sites which are tumor like they can be present on various parts of the body including on the face bone skin and in mucous membrane so these kind of inflammatory things are present which are called as goma now another kind of the syphilis is called as congenital syphilis in congenital syphilis mean when the microorganisms they pass from pregnant woman to the fetus and this congenital can be of two type one is infantile second is called as late congenital syphilis what is infantile infantile means when the symptoms of the syphilis appear in the infants immediately after the birth in a newborn baby if the symptoms of syphilis are present so what kind of symptoms will be there but in this condition late congenital syphilis the symptoms will be in the childhood as that means as the child is growing or in the adolescent stage now this symptoms they are mucocutaneous lesions which are very similar to the secondary syphilis and if in this condition the symptoms are corresponding to tertiary syphilis so obviously two type infantile immediately after the birth corresponding to secondary syphilis late congenital mean childhood or the adolescent uh, pertaining to tertiary syphilis now how we can diagnose this syphilis one of the mechanism is microscopic examination you take a, a site of infection you make a smear see under the dark field microscopic then you can see the trachoma pallidum second is the serological testing when we can estimate or determine the antibodies against the spirogates so there are two kind of antibodies one is non treponemal or the treponemal antibodies so this is what i want to discuss today with about the syphilis in the upcoming video i will discuss about the gonorrhea the clinical presentations and clinical diagnosis thank you